Welcome to Monday Motivations, 52 Weeks to a More Purposeful You. And this week we are talking about courage with Craig Westoff. I am super excited to have you on the show. We're family. Yes, like, we are. We, we are family um, yeah. by marriage. And um, I think we've been to one wedding together. And yes. Were you at Eric's wedding? Eric's, yeah. That, that was yeah. the one. <laughs> yeah. And um, we haven't had the chance to spend a great deal of time together, but I have really enjoyed your podcast and your social media. So for anyone um, curious of who is Craig Westhoff, um, he's a spiritual director. He helps people with their mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being. Um, one of the things that I love about your podcast, not only is it great for people like me that have the attention span of a gnat, um, <laughs> these podcasts are usually under 15 minutes and you're very real, you're very raw, um, you are um, faith-based, you are a believer, but I don't hear like the Christianese, I don't, it's like very real. And I think that um, the work that you do can help anyone, whether they believe or not um, in God. So I love, I love that. I really feel like you're, you're doing a great service to humanity. Thank you, Corey. And you're right. Emotions, thoughts, feelings, anxiety, depression doesn't discriminate whether you're a believer. I'll put it this way. If you're human, you have thoughts, emotions, and feelings, and we all, we all get to deal with it, you know? So. Yeah. I just, I should have brought this book. I just got a cool new book. Um, it's, I forget the exact title, but it it's 150 essential emotions. I'll, mm. I'll send you a screenshot. Um, and it's, each emotion, there's two pages in the book. It, there's no chapter. It's not like chapter reading, but it'll have the emotion. Let's just say annoyance. Then it'll have the, the root word, whether it's Latin, English, what have you. And then it goes into what does it say? What does it want? How does it show up in your body, oh, that's cool. your mind? Um, what it can be confused with? Is it present, past, or a future type of emotion? It's, it's great. So, yeah, let me know. I, I want that book. Okay, I'll send it to you. So, okay, so our topic is courage. Um, and what, when when you think about courage, um, what what are some of the things that come up for you in terms of well-being and courage? Vulnerability, authenticity, and honesty. You can't be courageous without being honest. Mm. Uh, we can still experience things like fear and anxiety and be courageous at the same time mm -hmm. you know i love how david said when i am afraid mm -hmm. i put my trust in you that's actually a statement of courage mm -hmm. and then elsewhere in scripture uh wait patiently for the lord be strong and courageous wait patiently for the Lo lord so you find uh, e even those of us who are waiting patiently for something that's an act of courage mm -hmm. because our human default is to force everything mm -hmm. to make, usually make things happen on our timeline, according to our standard, according to our, uh, our taste. And those of us who wait patiently, that's, that's an act of courage. So, so yeah, those are the, just to answer your question, those are the first thing that, that come, comes to mind, uh, vulnerability, authenticity, and honesty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, how do you think people, well, for yourself, um, what, what's an experience that you've had recently or over your lifetime where you've been awake to the need for courage? Well, just yesterday, um, I had an automatic negative thought, otherwise known as an ant. <laughs> A-N-T. Automatic negative thought pop up. Uh, I felt so there was the thought, and wherever there's a feeling, there's a thought. Wherever the, wherever there's a thought, there's a feeling. Mm -hmm. They're twins. Right on. So I felt very anxious and insecure, and and I was about to uh, share it with this person, but I could tell I was sharing it out of. There was something in me, I would call it the spirit of God. It was, it was just the idea of don't share this. This is, this is not going to be helpful. Mm -hmm. um, so the step of courage for me 
was to honestly wait mm. patiently, trust in the Lord, sur surf the urge, let it rise, because anywhere you have emotion, you know, the word motion is an emotion. It's all emotions and feelings and thoughts are, are designed to move through us. Mm -hmm. Once we, whatever we resist persists, it actually gets bigger. And so my step of courage yesterday to answer your question was just, uh, was just that. It, I paused. I was about to say something and I could tell. I'm like, no, no, don't. I, I took the brave, courageous step of waiting. Mm -hmm and taking ownership and and letting frankly making room for the holy spirit to do his thing because mm. he is our helper and so that's one that's the first one that comes to mind you know my first step of uh, courage and i would say i have those dare i say we all have opportunities for that numerous times a day mm. oh my gosh so you said so many great things that I kind of want to pause and touch on. I love the concept of there's so many opportunities for courage every day. So for everyone listening, especially me listening, <laughs> all of us, um, yeah, it's like, are we going to see that moment, that opportunity and be courageous or are we going to be unconscious and reactive? Hmm. And then yep. an, another huge point that I, I think that I would kind of like to dance in a little bit with you is um, the con a lot of times the images that we get in our mind when we think of courage, it's more of action and doing, which hmm. we'll touch on that later in this talk. But for right now, let's talk a little bit more about what it feels like, looks like, sounds like, and is like within ourselves and relationships to be courageous by not acting. Yep, that's very good, yeah. Not acting, not reacting, but responding with excellence of soul. It, it takes, so just to run off some examples, it takes courage for most of us to just be silent. Right. It's hard to not speak. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it takes courage for us to pause and breathe. It takes courage for us to not have the last word. Oh, gosh, we could do a whole podcast on that. Yeah. Right. It takes courage to just let something be. Mm -hmm. Just let it let it be yeah. allow time and space. And so sometimes what we consider to be proactive can look like inactivity but it's actually a deeper activity it's mm -hmm. now we're talking presence mm -hmm. and and being choose sometimes i react because i don't want to be in the moment mm -hmm. and so a courageous act is not to react but what if we just be Mm -hmm. let let be mm -hmm. right and there's another way of saying let go i prefer to say let let be um but you can let go uh, it's it's a courageous act of surrendering the moment to to grace mm -hmm. and uh and that's equally as brave but you know being being the way we are as humans we associate activity with big bombastic loud fireworks all this stuff you know but um the most profound activity i see in the life of jesus in scripture is is what he calls the secret place mm -hmm. you know god god i'll put it this way god who sees in secret rewards mm -hmm. so it's what's being done in secret in here mm -hmm. that and being courageous enough uh, to to step into that moment internally before so in, so so we don't react but we respond externally mm -hmm. we respond well mm -hmm. from from the source in here and and it's that would cultivate peace sound mind um uh what's the other word i'm looking oh 
compassion. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. So does that make sense? Oh gosh, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I could, we could go down many paths here. Um, when you talked about responding with excellence of soul, I, I wrote that down and, and it really is true with courage. There is vulnerability in there because if we pause and wait and not react, we are vulnerable, but then it produces that peace, the clarity. Sometimes it gives space to the other person to do some more thinking, to yep. apologize, to shift a behavior, or, or to go deeper into their you know, mistake, if you will, um, so that they can get big enough for them to see. But if we're, if we're always reacting in courage, it's not necessarily courage. Right. Yeah, you're right. And, and we have, you know, we have Hollywood and the movies and all that stuff, which is fine. And books, to, we have this, this Hollywood picture of what courage is, you know, it's superheroes. So it's all that stuff. Um, but at a deeper level, we, we can see courage depicted in, in nature. Um, and what I mean by that is a tree has the courage to just be a tree. <laughs> and to stay in a storm, stay in the rain. Right, that's it, stay deeply rooted. The tree isn't comparing itself to another tree. It's just embracing the its own thisness, so to speak, this, oh, right? Cool, I'm writing thisness down because yeah. I would like some more thisness. <laughs> right, being, right on, <laughs> thisness, yeah. the, the, the singular particularity of a thing. And, um, and so courage, how do I say this? Let me think. Yeah, I don't have to get it all up in, we just uh, are invited to have to welcome different pictures and different manifestations and expressions of courage. And it's not always the superhero uh, with the big muscles and all that stuff. Although that's fine. That's that yeah. has there's that a has, time and a place, right? But even where do, what I'm what we're talking about is a deep reserve of courage that is picturesque of Jesus sleeping in the boat in the middle of the storm. Mm -hmm. that, we call that faith, but that's also courage. Mm -hmm. And what did it look like outside? It looked like inactivity. It looked like it, he didn't care, mm -hmm. it, right? That's what the disciples were kind of implying. It's like, don't, don't you care if we're gonna die? And he's like, paraphrasing, relax everybody, right? Talk about courage in that moment. Mm -hmm. So it's fun to, you know, where we have a lack of, definition there's always distortion and so it's fun to be able to take this word courage and unpack it and unwrap it and find different ways courage shows itself and you, you'll be surprised to see that uh many times it comes across as something that we never th thought it would come across as mm -hmm. right yeah when when can you like if you think back to your younger years, because some people listening are going to be, you know, in their 20s, <clears throat> 30s, um, like what would you want to tell yourself in your younger days? What, what message would you want to give yourself about courage? Always have the courage to pause and breathe before you speak and do. Mm -hmm always have the courage to pause and breathe before you speak and do mm -hmm. that's that's what i would say <laughs> mm -hmm. um what was your because i'm guessing you didn't always live like this heck no man i, I uh you know i was and still can deal with, you know, big amounts of, you know, I went through 10 years of clinical depression, crippling anxiety. Uh, in my younger years, had quite a temper on me, uh, could get violent and 
And yeah, so no, and we're always practicing. We, we never stop learning. Always, mm -hmm. always have, we have a beginner's mind. I love, oh, I love that. Yeah. I actually, in the last couple of weeks, in the last couple of weeks, um, I've really been thinking a lot about that beginner's mind. Um, and even in the way in, in organizations and teams and um, whenever you put groups of people together, how they just tend to like segregate to likeness, like age groups, ethnicity, you know, we go, to, we gravitate towards comfort. And um, I just, I volunteered at a kid's camp. That's why we rescheduled. Yeah. Um, and every year I say, don't schedule anything during the kids camp week because it's nine to 12. But the closer it gets, I'm like, it's only nine to 12. I know you get there early, you stay yeah. late, you're emotionally taxed. There's, oh, I should run and grab the, it, it's really 40 hours a week. You know, it yeah. just, it ends up, but, um, but one of the things that always comes up around day three like day one is like, this is a waste of my time. I could be using my life a different way. You know, God <laughs> wants me to be used in this other, you know, and then like, I'm not, I'm not using my strengths. I'm babysitting or, you know, whatever. And, you know, and then like all of a sudden day three, I'm sitting in story time and like bawling, like I never heard it this way before, like, you know, and then by, by Thursday, I'm like, I'm going to do this year round. I'm going to build my own kids camp. Like, um, so yep. that, you know, that beginner's mind and being able to go back to the basics of, yeah. of courage or of it all, you know, but we're talking. Well, and, and I love how you're weaving this because it takes courage to admit that Let's just get real. We don't really know much at all. No, we don't. And most of the time, we we are responding out of out of the illusion that we think we know everything. And I think I know everything about me, and I'm sure I know everything about you. And so now I'm going to react. Um, mm -hmm. Thus, the pausing and the breathing. Another way to say it is contemplation, because contemplation always precedes action. Mm -hmm. Thought always precedes action. It's just most of the time we aren't aware of what we're contemplating until after the fact. You know, we look back and like, wow, why did I respond like that? Mm -hmm. Wow, why did I, you know, well, you were contemplating something, you just weren't conscious of it. And yeah. so another, another idea of courage is to be courageous enough to be aware, to pause and breathe and, and, and be aware of the moment and not, not rush into the moment. Mm -hmm. Let the moment be. Mm -hmm. Let it unfold before you. Mm -hmm. And as someone once said, contemplation asks, you know, now this is courage to me. Uh, contemplation at any given moment is always asking, what is the kind, what does kindness look like in this moment? Mm -hmm. What does kindness look like in this moment? That's, that's courage. Yeah. It takes a lot of courage to respond in kindness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I like that question. What does kindness look like in this moment? Because man, you're right. We, we don't know. We think we know so much and um, kindness in this moment, if we're really honest with ourselves, sometimes it might be to voice up and be mean. Yeah. yeah. Or sometimes it might be to pause and wait, even though we have the perfectly mm -hmm. delivered feedback to give, but maybe yep. the timing, you know, but yeah, it's, and, and I think that courage and pausing and asking questions like that gives us the chance to act in wisdom. Right on. Well, well said. That, that's it. That's it. Especially if you look at, I love, I love how you said that, Corey. Everything Jesus did was courageous mm -hmm. because everything he did, he only did because he saw the father do it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, another word for courage can be it's synonymous with faith. So if we're going to be courageous in, in any given moment, what we're saying is we're trusting something other than our, mm -hmm. ourselves fully. I'm, I'm trusting 
for me, it's Jesus. I'm trusting love. I'm trusting the wisdom he provides. Mm -hmm. That's a courageous move. Yeah. And, and when you say that, something that I keep circling back to, and um, I, I can't find another way but to bring light to it in even in my business and the work that I do in like coaching and training is um, we can't escape the fact that it's, it's like the humility piece. So when we're really courageous and we get honest, we can't help but bump up with our limitations as human beings. And, and we can't be curious if we think we know it all. And, and the truth is we're always seeking to know it all. Yeah. But when, but when we go, wait a minute, like there, I, I went to yoga this morning and um, just as I, just like in one of the meditations, it, I just kept thinking that like, the whole universe is, is functioning. Like I worry about things in my little life, but it's like, like, I don't, I never worry about is gravity going to keep me on the ground. I just right. trust that it's, it's going to, and I never say is, is somebody in charge making sure this is working out? It's like an, un, it's like a lack of gratitude for, you know, some people say higher power, but it's like, we are all on the receiving end of God's greatness, God's yeah. like, and, and the more we rest in that, then we can have courage to pause and be like, I don't have to say the last word. I, like things will work out. Yeah. Just as Juliet of Norwich would say, I think it was her or, or Teresa of Avila. Uh, I love this little, this little affirmation. She would simply say all is well, all is well. And all manner of things shall be well. Mm -hmm. And you can say that with an eternal perspective. Mm -hmm. And which takes courage to be able to have an eternal perspective. I'm going to see this with eternity in view. Mm -hmm. you know, the Desert Fathers would put it in a more of a, a different way by saying, always have death before you. <laughs> yeah. Which, which can be kind of, you know, macabre to some, but it just means, um, hey, you're not promised the next five minutes. Yeah. And the very, the, the very air in your breath right now is actually borrowed breath. Yeah. <laughs> uh, passed down from God through the creation story, Adam and Eve, and on and on goes. And uh, you're not breathing because uh, you're commanding your system to breathe. You're right. breathing because that's how God designed it. That's pretty freaking fascinating. Yeah. And um uh, and it ties in with the idea of God's grace. And it also ties in with the idea of, oh, I don't know much. I am a limited creature. I have this transcendental neediness. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. The and, transcend transcendental neediness. Yeah. I feel like that's like that's a really important piece that like I'm in my early 40s. And it's like I wasn't awake to that for the first four decades of my life. And Right and, you know, like, and then all of a sudden it's like, I've worn myself out trying to be competent, perfectionism, overcomer. My mantra was like, where there's a will, there's a way. And, and all those things are half truths and sure. we need both sides of the coin. We can't be dependent right. and, you know, not try, but I was so imbalanced of I will handle it. I will take care of it. So then there's this like, oh, part of the way I'm innately designed is to need, is to receive. And that is courageous. That's the opening yes. of the heart. Yeah. That's the vulnerability. Exactly. That's, that's absolutely courageous to recognize that. And that's, that's a gift. And, and there's, and there's, pain involved but we don't have to be afraid of the pain yeah yeah there so there's one little before we wrap up there's one um other area that i think would be really useful for our listeners and viewers to kind of touch on is 
what is courage like for people battling depression? So we, you mentioned that you had 10 years of clinical depression. Yeah. Um, so what would courage look like, feel like, sound like, be like um, for someone that's struggling with that? Courage, you know, and, and depression is multifaceted. There's a spectrum of depressive experiences, depression. You know, for some, it can look like just getting up mm -hmm. and going to work. I would say from my experience, mm -hmm. uh, courage looked like um, admitting, well, here we go with the vulnerability and the vulnerability, honesty, and authenticity, admitting I needed help, mm -hmm. um, acknowledging that yes, going to psychiatrists and psychologists would benefit me right now. Mm -hmm. um, courage was me admitting I was playing the victim and I was full of self-pity. Mm -hmm. Courage looked like uh, not pretending that everything was all right, mm -hmm. but actually, again, being honest with my situation, but then not being a victim to it. And, yeah. and, and then finally taking some ownership and co-partnering and co-creating with the spirit of life right mm -hmm. um things like that you know it can be man it could be anything it's multi it, it could be being courageous enough to finally to finally exercise and i say that just because one of the number one things we can do those of us who are familiar with depression for the brain is 30 minutes of cardio five days a week that's a big courageous step for some, right? Who wants to exercise when you're depressed? Right. Um, the inertia is like. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a big courageous step, you know, and on and on it goes. So, but again, you could see fundamentally, Corey, it's it's the courage to be real with what you feel, mm -hmm. so you can heal. Okay. Be real with what you feel, so you can heal. Yep. That's going to have to be like a <laughs> repeated saying. And I wasn't for years was not being real. I was mm -hmm. blame shifting. Well, once you get well and you, you, you be a better boss and you be a better spouse and I get better money and see, I'm fine. Once everything else gets fixed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll be fine. Right. Yeah. Well, that wasn't courageous. That was actually victim mentality, self-centeredness, self-referential, self-pity, self, 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 self. self. And then finally, you know, the pain always wins out and, and you come collapsing upon yourself like, like the prodigal son in the pig pen where it says he came to his senses. Yeah. And then he got courageous. And this was the courage for that guy, for that son. He actually went back to his father. Yeah. We, was a, we have to go back from where we came. Bingo. And that's a courageous move. Mm -hmm. That's, and, and we can feel like we're moving backwards and we're a failure. No, 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 no. He was regrouping and he was going back to love is what he was going back to. Mm -hmm. And to go back to love, you have to admit you need it. Yeah. And you have to admit that you're not all that in a bag of chips. And maybe you did get some things wrong. And all of that admission, there's the honesty, takes courage. Mm -hmm. Oh, I relate to so much of what you're saying. <laughs> so yeah. much. What what made it um, what kind of help send you over um, to admitting? Well, I was great question. I, here's here's the thing. When it, if we're just talking about in the context of depression and anxiety, yeah. mm -hmm. you, you cannot go it alone. Yeah. God primarily heals through community. Community. Yeah. Uh, even even Paul said. Uh, we had conflicts without fears within. And then he said this, super apostle Paul. He said, and God who comforts the depressed. So Paul is saying, I'm depressed. Mm -hmm. And he says, and God who comforts the depressed comforted us by sending us a brother named Titus. Mm -hmm. So we pray for God's comfort and peace and healing. And if you're like me, I prefer to just have it all done a room in a room in, alone. In private, right? In private. Yeah. So, so no I can come back out and everyone can see I have it together. Like yeah. Superman out of the phone yeah. booth kind of a thing, right? Yeah. 
And God's like, no, that's not how it's going to happen. Uh, it happens in vulnerable, authentic, honest community. And again, that takes courage. So that's the first thing. Any, any, any people I talk with, any clients, whatever, and, and they're dealing with anxiety, depression, low self-esteem, self-hatred. One, one of the first things I'll ask, Corey, is tell me about your community. Yeah. And most of the time, they don't have a community to speak of. Mm -hmm. And so I'll say, we got to get you in community. Mm -hmm. and not to be fixed, but to get you in the presence of love. Yeah. Be love and listening. Mm -hmm. Because listening, as Alice Freiling says, listening is indistinguishable from love and love heals. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So I had, a, I had a community that they didn't try to fix me. You know, there there were the random couple or two, which I totally get it. They're, they all they all mean well, mm -hmm. but it was a community that just let me s suffer, and they climbed in, and there was a fellowship in my pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. And over time, plus with a bunch of other things, counseling and all that stuff. But I I guess what I to wind it up, I'm I had a safe place mm -hmm. where I didn't have to pretend. Yeah. And uh, people didn't try to fix me. They just loved me. And love, love always transforms. Love believes all things, hopes all things. Love endures all things. Mm -hmm. Love never fails, right? Yeah. And that's the challenge is because depression and crippling anxiety, one of the byproducts of that, the invitations to our flesh is to withdraw. Yeah, and isolate. To isolate. And so thus, it takes a big amount of courage when you're feeling like that, mm -hmm. and I was bad. I was cutting myself with a knife, abusing alcohol. I, I was a mess. Mm -hmm. And you take that moment of desperation and darkness, and in that moment you say, I'm going to step into some authentic community. Mm -hmm. You're the bravest person I know when you do that. Mm. <sighs> <laughs> This is beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. Wow. I feel peaceful just talking about it. Right on. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'll, I'll say this real quickly. It's because we're, we're, a friend of mine told me this years ago, we are more alike in our weaknesses than we are in our strengths. Mm -hmm. Right, so you're, you, yeah. have, you have certain strengths that I don't. I have certain strengths that you don't. So we're different that way, but dare I, I say, you and I are both are familiar with what it feels like to be anxious. Yes. So yes. now we're more alike in that feeling of anxiety. So now we have something in common. Yeah. So now I don't have to run away from you. I can actually find companionship in our pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That just gives me um, a greater conviction to let go of perfectionism and to encourage and inspire others to do the same because perfectionism is such a prison and it creates isolation oh yeah because perfectionism is an illusion actually perfectionism my definition of perfectionism is it's the imperfect response to the lie that we have to be perfect <laughs> mm -hmm. and and people say practice makes perfect no it doesn't uh, I would say, especially for the son and daughter of God, practice just leads us into deeper intimacy the, with the one who is perfect. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be perfect. Mm -hmm. I want to be me. Yeah. I want to, I just want to be freaking human. We're human. I want to be me, yeah. all of me. Yeah. All, all of the good stuff, the, the dark, the light, the pain, the joy. It's God's idea. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, I, I didn't, I'm not my idea. <laughs> right. right. I didn't create my creation. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so he hasn't called us to perfection. If anything, he's called us to being real, yeah, to with him. Humi humility, mm -hmm. honesty. And, and, and I believe we can't do that without him. And he shows up and he says, this is what it looks like to be real. His name is Jesus. Walk with me, join your life with me, and I'll journey with you. And he was real enough to say, today has enough trouble of its own. You know, Even Jesus at one point said, my soul is grieved to the point of death. That's how real he was. He was able to say, in layman's terms, this moment sucks right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, let's just get real. I mean, Jesus. Yeah. So I, I get excited over, you have permission 
to be fully human. Mm -hmm. And perfectionism says, no, you don't. Right. You're never satisfied, content, or confident pursuing the perfectionistic goal. Yeah, it's an illusion. It's an illusion. So in closing, um, what is what would you say is the best practice for yourself and for me and for those listening when it comes to courage? Like maybe more of like a, a nourishing practice or routine or a habit or something that will help us cultivate greater courage. Well, as I said, there's the pause and breathe. Mm -hmm. uh, pause and breathe. At, before each moment, breath precedes it. We just aren't aware of it, right? So that's my go-to. Just and, and of course, it's an, always an invitation and a practice of increased awareness, right? Mm -hmm. Pause and and breathe. And then on a very fun, practical, experimental level, uh, pay attention to, how do I say this? We all have things we're avoiding. Yes. Be it people, situations, thoughts, feelings, okay? Take some time and find just one thing you're avoiding. Mm -hmm. Or one thing you want to attack, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and just ask yourself, what would courage look like in this space? I'm going to do this. Because I have would, something. Hey, I do too. What would courage look like in this space? Mm -hmm. Or you can say, what, what kind of person would I be right now if I was courageous? That's in, this moment, in this moment, yeah. Mm -hmm. And my advice is, you know, practice with the little things, you know, find something little that you're avoiding. It could just be uh, you know, on a scale of one to 10, a, a five level tense conversation with someone about something. Mm -hmm. Take that, you know, could, could be anything, of course, but um, just, that, but that's it. Because mm -hmm. what happens is, you know, we're in scripture, you read, resist the devil and he flees. That's true. But when it comes to circumstances and, and especially emotions, and especially the negative emotional sensations, what we resist persists. It just gets bigger. It doesn't flee. Resistance increases it. Mm -hmm. So courage says, I'm not going to resist this moment anymore. Uh, this life-giving moment. I'm not, not, I'm not talking about attacking. I'm talking about the moment of courage. I'm not going to resist it. I'm going to, I'm going to ponder, pause, breathe, and find out what is the courageous act in this moment. Another way to say it is that question of contemplation. What what does kindness what does kindness look like? Yeah. In this moment, because I guarantee you, a kind act is a courageous act, <laughs> and that's kindness towards yourself and others. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the kind act is a courageous act. Oh, this is so good, so good. Oh my goodness. So. For people that want more of Craig, they can find you on social media, Illuminated Soul, yep. right? Instagram, Facebook, and then the podcast, Illuminated Soul with Craig Westoff, Becoming Aware, Becoming Whole, uh, Google, Apple, Spotify, Anchor. Yeah, and, and, I, and I highly encourage it for anyone that doesn't have a lot of time. It, they're like little nuggets, almost like little positivity pills or, oh, I like or that. <laughs> you know, like a little clarity pill. So um, thank you so much. Uh, so appreciate you. And and hopefully we'll have a family gathering soon. And be I would love that. It's good seeing you, Corey. Yeah, good seeing you. And everyone join us next week for another Monday Motivation. Thank you. <laughs>